Hi, Rock Buddies. Hope you guys are all doing fantastic. Today, we're going to look at examples of igneous rocks. And I hope you will like this video and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because that helps me put out good material for you. So here we go. Examples of igneous rocks. You probably remember from our last video about igneous rocks that igneous rocks come from three main locations. Location one, rifting centers. Location two, subduction zones. And location three, continental crashing zone. And today we're going to talk about the igneous rocks that are produced at rifting centers. When you have a supercontinent like Pangaea that covers a huge portion of the earth, it's like having a lid on a very hot pot. It makes it even hotter. The mantle gets so hot that eventually it erupts, splitting the supercontinent into pieces. This is our first igneous rock example. This is called diabase. It is an igneous rock. It is an intrusive rock, which means it, it comes up close to the surface but does not erupt. It is also a mafic rock, which means it is very high in iron, magnesium, and calcium. Here is a close-up of diabase. The white mineral is calcium-rich feldspar. The black mineral is pyroxene, mostly, which is very high in iron and magnesium. You will also notice that diabase is a relatively dark rock as are most of the rocks that come from rifting. Here is a picture of the supercontinent Pangaea with a mantle hotspot getting ready to bust it into pieces and that molten magma right under the continental crust is made of, you guessed it, diabase magma. The diabase magma acts as a blowtorch splitting the supercontinent into pieces and creating a rift valley. And once it creates a rift valley, the diabase reaches the surface, but then it becomes a different igneous rock, our next igneous rock. When the diabase reaches the surface and erupts, it becomes basalt lava. Basalt lava is just the above ground version of diabase. It is an igneous rock, just like diabase, but unlike diabase, Basalt is an extrusive rock. That just means it comes out on the surface. Basalt lava, like diabase, is a mafic rock. That means it's high in iron, magnesium, and calcium. Here, the minerals in basalt are exactly the same as the minerals in diabase. So we have the little tiny white spots are calcium-rich feldspar and the black stuff is mostly pyroxene, which is high in iron and magnesium. The little crystal sizes are, in basalt are very small. That's because it comes out of when it comes out of the ground, it cools so quickly, the crystals don't have time to grow very big. All the holes were made by gas bubbles that expanded as the hot lava reached the surface of the ground. Basalt lava erupting on the surface and rifting a supercontinent into pieces. At first, basalt lava is erupting in these great rift valleys as it's rifting the supercontinent into pieces, but eventually an ocean begins to form and the basalt lava is now erupting on the bottom of the ocean at a mid-ocean ridge, creating new ocean crust and expanding the ocean because rifting creates and expands oceans. Now, a new igneous rock comes to our attention. This rock is called gabbro. Gabbro is made of exactly the same minerals as diabase and basalt. And at a mid-ocean ridge, you will find it right at the bottom of the basalt that's erupting out of the underwater volcanoes. The mineral crystal sizes in gabbro are much larger than those in diabase and hugely much larger than those in basalt. That tells you it's deep underground because it cools more slowly and any magma that or molten rock that cools underground gives time for the mineral sizes to grow bigger. 
getting a little confusing, so let's review a little bit. First of all, when a hot spot develops underneath a supercontinent like Pangaea, the first igneous rock that's produced when it's starting to break it up is called diabase. You get these big diabase dikes. That's just underground lines of diabase magma that are act like blowtorch and start splitting the supercontinent into pieces. Uh, this creates rift valleys that are uh, very deep, very wide valleys that are beginning to separate the continent into pieces. When that happens, the diabase shoots out into the open as basalt lava volcanoes in these rift valleys. As the rift get, valley gets bigger and bigger and more of these basalt lava volcanoes are erupting, eventually ocean comes in and the ocean begins to get wider and wider and at that time these volcanoes, underwater volcanoes, are producing ocean crust. A mid-ocean ridge is like an ocean crust factory and a conveyor belt. The center of the mid-ocean ridge is a line of hot volcanoes. And in each volcano at the very base of the volcano is this gigantic pool of molten gabbro. Um, and as that gabbro rises up to the top of the volcano, and then suddenly it reaches the surface, the underwater surface of the ocean, and it extrudes in a big columnar post-like shape of basalt lava. That's one unit of this ocean crust. Then up comes another blob of gabbro pluton, and when it reaches the surface, it pushes up another column of basalt lava, and that pushes the first one over to the side. Uh, and it goes on and on and on, on both sides of the mid-ocean ridge. And that's how uh, rifting at a mid-ocean ridge creates and expands ocean. How do we know this is the way that ocean crust is made and what ocean crust looks like? It's because over the many millennia and eons of time, big pieces of ocean crust have been pushed up onto land and they look something like this. Each one of those post-looking things is a column of basalt that's put out at a mid-ocean ridge and then pushed over to the side so that another column of basalt can be produced and on and on and on. And at the bottom, you can't see it in the picture, but at the very bottom of these many, many columns of basalt is a big pool of gabbro pluton. So that's the story of igneous rocks produced at a rifting environment where a supercontinent is rifted apart, ocean put in between, and ocean crust produced. And we know that these rocks are mafic rocks, diabase, gabbro, basalt. All three are made this, of the same minerals, calcium-rich feldspar and pyroxene. Okay, rock buddies, so that's the story about the kinds of igneous rocks that are produced at rifting environments. The next video will tell you about the kinds of igneous rocks that are produced in subduction environments. Uh, until then, if you find this video helpful or useful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. And as always, I love to hear comments and I always respond to them. So you guys have a great day and a great week. Pop out.